it. But right now, it is our pleasure to welcome in Mark Schlereth, three-time Super Bowl champ, NFL analyst with Fox. Of course, uh, played for the Commanders or for Washington from 89 to 94. Stink, welcome to the show, man. Glad to have you. Uh, it's great to be with you, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I, you are, we were texting earlier to set this up and, and like the Venn diagram of, of experiences that you have is great because not only uh, all the things I just said relative to Washington and being successful in the NFL, but you also just went through this in Denver with an ownership change. So we'll circle back to that in a second. But first, simply, what was your reaction when you heard the news that Dan Snyder was finally not going to be the owner of the Washington Commanders anymore? Oh, I mean, I was so excited because Dan Snyder, in my opinion, is a turd. So in my one of my life experiences, just don't be a turd. Like, that is one of the things I believe in. And um, I'm so glad that he is gone. And uh, I'm so glad that the Washington Commanders can have new ownership and experience that. And, you know, I mean, I, I love Ron Rivera. I think Ron Rivera is a really good man. And I think he's a, he's a great man to lead the franchise forward. But I just thought that, um, you know, that organization deserves to be a crown jewel um, in the NFL, you know, in the NFL, and, and they haven't been since he took over ownership. And um, and so I'm just glad that I'm glad that they're moving on and that they, like I said, and I've said many times before, welcome back to the NFL, Washington Commanders. I'm excited for you. Um, can you compare your experience as an alum of this organization over the last 25 years to, compared to the way that you have been treated by the Broncos organization as an alum? Um, not, well, not really. I mean, I, recently it's been, it's been really good with Washington. Um, you know, I'm, I live in Denver. I'm a, you know, I, I do national television stuff and call games and, uh, have a radio show here in Denver. So, um, oftentimes in Denver, you know, I can step on some toes because uh, the one thing about me is I'll be blunt as a spoon and, um, and I'm going to tell you exactly what the truth is. And, Sometimes, you know, organizations don't really like that. Um, but um, recently with Washington, it's been great. It, it really has. They've really made a huge effort under Ron Rivera and under Jason Wright and, um, and several of the other people over there in that organization to really bring back the alumni and to really have them involved in the organization, which I appreciate. I came out there last spring and spoke at the rookie symposium they put together and uh, you know, they've, they've been really good with stuff like that. So um, I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, like I said, often because of what I do for a living, um, I can, you know, I can be abrasive or I can hurt some feelings. But um, the bottom line is, is, as a player, you know, I treat it, I treat it just like I did as a player. When you had me as, a, as part of your organization as a player, you expected – Every you expected 100% effort, 100% preparation. You expected me to do my job without fail, to go out and play hurt, to play injured, to do all those things. Why would you expect any less from me as a member of the media? Like shame on you. That's 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 a you problem. That's not a me problem. So um, yeah, sometimes, like I said, uh, here in Denver, I can I can uh, get myself into a little hot water, but. Um, Whatever, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Mark Schlereth, Fox, uh, of course, NFL analyst with us here on the Team 980. Uh, on the Snyder front, one more thing real quick, and then I do want to spin it forward to, to what you think this organization you know, looks like moving forward. But when was the first time you remember developing an opinion on Snyder? Like, was there an event that, that kind of started to make you go like, wow, yes. don't think this guy's, this guy's very good? Uh, yeah, I, I went back for Daryl Green's 40th birthday party, um, and we were both still playing in the league. Obviously, Daryl is a, a dear friend of mine, and I was sitting at a table, and Daniel Snyder was sitting beside me. It was, you know, name tags, and that's where we were assigned seating, and um, asked me questions about free agent football players for 30 minutes. Got up in the corner, went to the corner of the room, got on a cell phone, made a call, 35, 40 minutes, comes back to the table, and I jokingly say, did you trade for me? And he just looked at me like, how dare you speak to me? And he turned his back to me and didn't speak to me the rest of the evening. Wow. That's and so, so perfectly you know on what? brand. He can kiss my ass as far as I'm concerned. 
So Mark Schlereth here saying good riddance to Daniel Snyder on the team 980. Um, Stink, as you mentioned, you're, you're Denver based now. Um, and you guys just went through the ownership change out there over the last year. How quickly did you start to see things change and how quickly can an ownership group impact how successful a football team is? Well, you know, I, I watched them kind of try to immerse themselves in the business of football and and they did a really good job of understanding hey we don't know we don't necessarily know football um we know the business side of it so let us immerse ourselves in the football side of it and get as much information as we can um and reach out to as many people as we can about about this game and kind of kind of take it on you know on that kind of path and then obviously when things uh, were just not going well here and, and they had a game against the Rams where they lost, I think, 51-14 to 14 or something of that nature, um, and then they started firing people. And, you know, since then they have been, they've been talking about redesigning uniforms. They've been talking about a new stadium. They've put out a bunch of, uh, bunch of um, questionnaires for their fan base about new stadiums and what's important and this, that, and the other, and been really working toward – um, toward and with um, the fan base to, to figure those things out. And then obviously going through this coaching search and going out and getting a, a, a real live NFL football coach who's an adult um, that can hold people accountable and most importantly hold the investment accountable that you made in your quarterback who really um, played as poorly as anybody I've ever seen play in the league last year in Russell Wilson. So um, they've made a lot of, in my in my mind and estimation, really smart football decisions, and really hired smart football people, um, and and one empowered those people. You know, one of the issues I think that that Washington has had for a very long time since Daniel Snyder took over is there's one thing to hire people and appoint people, and there's another thing to empower people. And when you hire a coach, that coach needs to be empowered. And if he isn't, well, you automatically emasculate him before he walks into the facility. And I think that's something that is a real issue or has been a real issue in Washington. I also think it happens to be a real issue in Dallas. I think there's some some problems there. So one of the things that I've seen here in Denver with the new ownership group is they appointed a coach and they've empowered him where before they got there, you know, they hired a quarterback and empowered him to basically – you know, tell the coach what he wanted to run and how he wanted to run it. And I mean, that, that hierarchy, if you don't have it squared away, it it will never work. And that's one of the reasons I think Washington had fallen on such hard times under, um, you know, under Daniel Snyder. Uh, You mentioned that you are a big fan of Ron Rivera, someone who actually has been fairly empowered here. Uh, Obviously a lot of fans here have been frustrated because they haven't been over 500 during his tenure. So what is it that you like about Rivera that you still think he's the right guy moving forward for, for Washington? One, he he is a, he is a great man that will hold his players accountable. And, um, and I think that's really important. Now, obviously, you know, you've got to rectify and fix the quarterback situation and, you know, as much as we all loved Heineke and he's so exciting and he's fun, he's fun to hang around and stuff. uh, There's a ceiling um, from a, just a pure talent standpoint that I think you saw over the course of time. And that's not a Rivera issue. And then with Carson Wentz, I mean, that is a guy that has been beaten down so much. You only have so many sacks and so many hits. um, I think that you can absorb and before you know, that's all you see. And so I feel bad for Carson because I think Carson's a really good man. He's a really good kid. Um, but, you know, I think his time in Philly beat him up, beat him down. Um, there was a, a year in Philly in 20, I think it's 2020, that he took 50-some-odd sacks, um, you know, in the, or maybe more than that, 60 sacks. I mean, he just got the snot beat out of him. And, you know, I mean, that – that experiment didn't work, and, and I feel bad for him for that reason. But uh, bottom line, like I said, I think he's, he understands football. He knows kind of what he wants the identity to be of the football team, which I think is a huge, huge attribute to any head coach 
of being able to say this is who we are, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to win football games and let, and get everybody on board. And I think he's he has that ability to get people on board that way. Mark Schlereth, Fox NFL analyst, with us for just a few more quick minutes here on the Hoffman Show. Um, speaking of coaches who are notorious for holding players accountable, what do you make of the acquisition of Eric Bieniemy for Washington this offseason? Yeah, you know, I, I like it. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Um, it'll be interesting to see kind of what offense he brings. And obviously under Andy Reid all these years and the way they have operated um, with Patrick Mahomes, and the, just the pure talent you have on the outside, um, it, it will be really exciting to see how that offense functions and the way they go about that. Obviously, you know, Patrick Mahomes uh, makes up for a multitude of sins. So you don't have that guy. So, um, but I'm excited to see what Eric Bieniemy, you know, brings. And, you know, he's a vitriolic dude, you know, from, I don't really know him, but, um, you know, from what I understand, like, he'll get after folks. And, you know, ultimately, I love it. I mean, I, that's how I was coached my whole life. So I, I think that's a, I think that's a great thing. Um, and um, we'll just see how guys respond to it. Uh, I, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you on the way out. You got any other Dan stories you want to unload? Uh, no, but you know, they're all the same. Yeah. Uh, like, and like everybody, you, everybody you talk to has a Dan Snyder story of him just being an absolute turd. So, I mean, that, I mean, that's all you can say. And, you know, I'm not, I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I mean, um, that's his job. Like, that's what he does. Uh, so whatever, like, no, I don't have any, I, I think I pretty much summed it up for you. No, this, the summary was, was, I mean, look, I, it, it, every story that I hear, it's like both the details are incredible and completely unsurprising at the same time. Cause you're right. Everyone has one. It's just like, wow, there are so many of them. And when you get the stories themselves, as you well know, stories make for great radio. So it, trust me, Mark, I got the gist. I just didn't know if you had any more specifics that you, that you wanted to share. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't, I came back for, uh, uh, our, I think it was our 20, maybe our 25th uh, reunion of Super Bowl 26, you know, and, and Washington did a phenomenal job of hosting us. It was fun. It was a great reunion to see all the guys that you played with and everything else. Um, and, uh, you know, he invited me to sit in the box with he and his wife, uh, which I declined because I have no interest in sitting with him. Um, like, why would I want to sit with you? Like, that, you know, but then, you know, then it was different because then I had a television career and, uh, you know, and then it would have, you know, it, I don't know, maybe it was a benefit at that point. Um, but yeah, no interest. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about it next time. Uh, you see if Josh Harris invites you into his box, although typically I guess you're in the broadcast <laughs> booth these days. So, uh, you know, yeah. maybe Josh well, will come I visit you come, and Adam. I, I, Hey, I did get to come down and, and call the game and, and Washington was unbelievable. The organization was great. They called Fox and, and basically asked Fox if I could do the Cleveland game because they were honoring the hogs. Um, and they rolled out the red carpet and it was absolutely phenomenal. And I was proud to be, you know, part of the organization, proud to be honored. Um, and Joe Gibbs was there and, you know, Russ Grimm and Jeff Bostick and, and Mark Rippin and Doug Williams. And it was it was just tremendous. It was such a great, great reunion. Good to see Coach Gibbs again. And uh, I got to, you know, be out there honored before the game. And then uh, I did my uh, I did my booth hit from the sideline, which was really cool. Um, it was great. But that was Washington reaching out to Fox, begging to have me call the game. So I thought that was a really cool thing um, that they did. And it just goes to show you there's a lot of good people in that organization that want things done the right way. And um, and hopefully, like I said, hopefully Washington rises back to the place of prominence that uh, it deserves and where it belongs. No doubt about it. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again a couple times this fall. Always great uh, to have you and Adam on the call. Uh, Mark Schlereth, everybody, calling us from, uh, from Denver, uh, Fox NFL analyst, local radio host there in Denver, and, of course, a three-time Super Bowl champion. Mark, this was great. We'll definitely have you back, hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. Sounds good. Take care. All right. It's Mark Schlereth, everybody. Hey, uh, hey, Anthony, do you, uh, do you think the digital folks are going to want the part where Mark called, called, uh, called Dan turd? Do we are think that, about, are you talking about this part? Yeah. Opinion's a turd. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think that one might get a few clicks. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. Yeah. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.